Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from TrainSignal. The following clip is from TrainSignal's Windows Server 2008 MCITP Server Administrator course featuring over 15 hours of server administrator training. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start. All programs. Here's the Windows AIK Automated Installation Kit. And here I have the Windows System Image Manager. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now the first thing we need to do here is we need to actually select that image file that we copied over to the hard drive. So I'm going to right click and select Windows Image. Now I need to go ahead and browse to, well it's actually already defaulted to the root of my C drive. So C drive, here's install.wim. Go ahead and select that. And now I need to select which image within that file. Remember, there's six of them. So I'm going to pick Server Enterprise. Click OK. And here, this is actually why we needed to move it to the hard drive. It says that the catalog file cannot be opened for the following reason. Can't find a catalog file associated with this image. So we need to go ahead and create the catalog file. And this is really a file that helps us to navigate throughout the image and locate where certain installation features are going to be located. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Yes. And again, if this was on the DVD, well, we wouldn't be able to create this catalog file because it's creating it in the same location where the image file is, and we can't write to the DVD. So this will take just another moment, and then once it's complete, we're going to go ahead and enter a couple of settings that we want to have automated and then we're going to go ahead and deploy the image with these settings automated and I'll show you how they actually work. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll be right back with you as soon as this is done. Okay, the catalog file has been created and as you can see here we now have an image and what we need to do next after creating the image or I should say selecting the image, is we need to go ahead and create an answer file based upon this image. So right up here, I'm going to right click and select new answer file. And here you'll see that we have components and packages just like we have down here on the image. And there are seven different components that make up the answer file. And again, this can get quite sophisticated, but we're going to keep this fairly simple for right now. I will tell you that there is a lot of research that you would need to do in order to learn how to create the exact answer file for all the specifics that you may want on any given server. But we're going to go ahead and select a couple of common settings. So first of all, over here back on the image, I'm going to expand components. And you will see that there are a lot of components here. That's why I'm saying there, there's a lot of stuff that you can do in the automated configuring of a server. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and expand Windows Unattended Join. And then here we have Identification. I'm going to expand that. And Credentials. Now, what this setting is, is this has to do with if you want the server to automatically join the domain and do so with specific credentials. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and select add setting to pass for specialize. That's the only choice that we have here. Under specialize, let me go ahead and select that. You will see over in the answer file, we now have the ability to go ahead and enter these credentials. So we're going to say for the domain globomantics.com, we want to go ahead and use a password and now you're gonna actually get to see my secure password that I've been using this is a very typical password that I've used very often in the classroom it satisfies the uppercase and lowercase and a symbol and a number that's the password that I've been using uh, for my administrator account so for username we're gonna go ahead and use administrator and those are the credentials that will now be used when joining the domain uh oh, we have to go a step back though. Let me click on identification. We have to select the domain that we're going to join. So we're going to say join the globalmantics.com domain. So now if we were to just simply use this answer file, 
on any given installation of Windows Server 2008, automatically as part of that installation, we will attempt to join the globalmantics.com domain using these credentials. And as long as we have connectivity with a domain controller that would allow us to do this, that'll all work. But let's go one step further. I'm going to actually scroll on this side. Let's scroll back up. And I want to go right here to Shell Setup and expand that. And actually, instead of expanding it, let me go ahead and just the, the whole Shell Setup. Let me right click. And again, we're going to add it to Specialize. A lot of the settings that you will do will be under this Specialize component of the unattended installation. And I know that seems a little confusing right now, but again, um, there is, you know, entire books that have been written on just how to set up a complete answer file with all seven of these components with a very, very in-depth, detailed configuration of a server. But the reason I added this one was to go ahead and set up a computer name. And so I'm going to go ahead and set up one more domain controller. We've set up a domain controller for Chicago and we set one up for Tokyo. But we, we need one for our Dallas office. So I'm going to go ahead and put in DAL-DC1-2K8. Right? That's the name of the computer that we want to go ahead and set up in Dallas. All right, and then go ahead and just click away so it accepts that answer. And you'll see here that we could do other things. We could go ahead and enter uh, product key as a for instance. We could specify what time zone it's going to be. Okay, and, and the list goes on and on and on if we were to come back over here and scroll through all these different possible settings. And there are a lot of them. I mean, there are literally thousands of individual settings that we could set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to File, and I'm going to say Save Answer File As. And then just, you know, just right on the root of, of this computer, on the C drive, I'm going to go ahead and save this. You'll notice it's an XML document. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it as auto unattended. Now, this name doesn't really have any significance other than it's the default name. This is the default name that Windows will look for if you were even just doing a standard CD based or I should say DVD based installation. In other words, if I were to take this auto unattended dot XML document and put it on let's say a flash drive and put that USB flash drive into a computer and then boot off the DVD, it'll automatically look for this file and use it. So I like to stick with the default name. You could name this really anything you want though. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now that this has been saved, let's close out of the Windows System Image Master, or Image Manager, I should say. And back here on Windows Deployment Services, let's now select that particular file for an unattended installation for Server Enterprise. Right click, Properties, Allow Image to Install Unattended, select File, and I'm going to Browse, and I'm going to go to the computer the C drive and then here I have auto unattended click OK and OK what I've just done is I've just made it that any other computer that connects to this Windows deployment services server and attempts to use this image for deployment will automatically have the name Dallas DC1 and will join the globalmantics.com domain 